Hello everybody, welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. We are going to be painting another uh, beautiful foresty kind of like greenery painting today um, and it's going to be a little bit more abstract. It's inspired by Shloka art which I will include in the description as I do and um, I love her paintings. I think she, I don't know what medium she uses, but it looks like either gouache or acrylic to me because it's very intense and it's very, um, like, how would I describe it? Uh, all, not, not pointillism or pointillism, whatever, however you say that, but it's just very shapey. Like she uses a lot of abstract shapes and stuff. Uh, so I really like that. Not that I'm going to be replicating that aspect of her painting, but I just wanted to mention um, that aspect of her art that I will not be replicating. Um, simply because, well, I guess there are a lot of reasons, but I don't think watercolor is the best medium to use for paintings like that. So we're starting off, I'm just taking like a baby blue color almost, and I'm applying it in the top right corner area. Everything else is going to be some sort of shade of green. So um, I'm taking like a more yellowish green. Oh, that is not really what I was going for. And just blending that in with the blue. So here we're just creating our kind of background wash because it's a lot easier when we already have base colors to go off of when we're painting rather than starting with something with a like a white base. I had quite the stressful morning, actually the stressful few days. I'm really getting tired, uh, but our, there's just been like one problem after another with our chickens. Like first one of them got out because we didn't secure their little makeshift run properly. And we looked for her for an hour at night, couldn't find her. Next day, we continued looking and found her in the neighbor's boat. Um, and then that same day, we left. And when we came home, uh, there was a squirrel stuck in the run. I don't know how it got in if it couldn't get out, but it was really panicking, which was causing the poor chickens to panic. Uh, they were like every time this the squirrel would dart from one corner to the other like the chickens would run frantically and uh, one of them must have gotten injured in that process because when we finally got the squirrel out and everyone calmed down she was limping a lot and then that limp turned into hopping just on one foot and she was really not doing well um, I was really worried. I shed a lot of tears <laughs> for that poor chicken. And, uh, that would, that happened, I think, Saturday or Sunday, one of those days. And now it is Wednesday and we've kept her separate from the chicken, the other chickens, like in her own little run. And, uh, she's... And then at night we bring her in to sleep in a little box inside the house. And that has really helped. Like she, she's basically almost all better now. Her tail is back up. She's not limp. Like she has like the, if you really look, you can notice like a very 
small limp, but it's mostly all gone. And she's been such a good girl. Like we hold her to clean her feet to make sure that there's nothing because she had a little cut there and she just makes these adorable little sounds, but doesn't really create a fuss beyond that. And, um, and we always thought she was the one that wasn't, was kind of slacking on the egg laying because we weren't getting as many eggs as we thought. But no, she has been laying. Oh, there's a mosquito and I want to end its lineage. Sorry. Uh, so we thought that she was the one that was slacking. But no, she's been laying every day. So I really wonder which one is slacking or which few are slacking. Because today, again, we had her separated and she laid an egg and then I went to check the others. No eggs. No eggs from the four other chickens. So come on, guys. Get your act together. Ah. Got it. Got the mosquito. Um, anyways, the drama doesn't end there, but hold on. Let me just figure out what I'm doing here. So uh, I hope you were able to follow along with what I was just doing. I'm just adding like darker green. You can even mix some black in there over top. So I'm going to do that on this side as well because we're going to be painting trees that are kind of overlapping and whatnot. Um, so if we have a base of dark green already laid out, then it's going to make everything a lot easier. So you want to do this while your background is still wet, of course, so it spreads out really nicely. But, um, so yeah, you can follow where I'm laying down my green and do the same on your painting, or you can do, uh, your own thing. But back to my chicken story. So this morning we put her in her own separate little run again, as we've been doing the last few days. And I had the window open purposely so that I could hear if she was in distress for whatever reason. And I hear her making that sound that chickens make when there's a predator close by or they're scared or uncomfortable or whatever. It's this very rhythmic um, sound. And I go and I check and of course that big fat gray squirrel is back in the separate enclosure. She's not in the enclosure, but she's right beside it because the chicken keeps spilling her food. Uh, and so, you know, obviously the squirrel is attracted to all the corn and the different types of grain and stuff. So I spent two hours. Every five minutes, the squirrel would come back and I would scare it away. And I began to get increasingly frustrated because my plan today since it's like a rainy day was to get another month's worth of tutorials painted and it's you know it's been two hours and this is the first painting so anyway I tried to cock the crossbow that we have and I am just too weak and I can't do it it's like, you really need to be strong to cock that thing. And because I was going to just take care of the squirrel. I could not freaking take it anymore. I, I was, she's already caused so much damage to my chickens. Um, so much distress in her lives. And uh, yeah, I was just going to, I know that a lot of people are probably not too fond of that option, but I choose my chickens over a squirrel that has already injured one of my chickens. Anyways, I cannot cock this bow. I'm too weak. And so instead, I moved the chicken back to the run with all the other chickens because she's 
almost all better. And the other thing we were worried about her ability to get up the run into the coop, sorry, up the ramp into the coop because our ramp is very steep. So we thought she might not be able to make it, but I, as soon as I put her in her, the, she just went straight up the ramp because she probably was hungry or something because she spilled all of her food and the squirrel was eating it. So uh, that's where we're at right now. I have a big headache. <laughs> so sorry, I've been adding some black on top of the green just to darken those areas. And I'm going to add, I think, yellow as well. Oops, I'm using the wrong palette. Like a yellowy orange, maybe. Because this tutorial is going to be uploaded in September, I think. And so it's already going to be, you know, the season of like we're going to be transitioning into fall and it's going to be that really cozy sweater weather time of the year or starting to be it's more october but so this will be very appropriate you can even add some orange if you want to in there I just don't want to kind of negate all that black watercolor that I added. Yeah, I think I've got a little too much going on. So I'm going to add a little bit of black back in. Okay, I just went to check and of course the squirrel has moved on and it, not moved on, it has moved to the chicken run and it is now walking around the chicken run. That thing is pretty heavily fortified, but we just renovated it and because of that there are kind of holes where it technically could get in on the bottom. Um, I'm exhausted. This squirrel thing, I just want to take care of this squirrel, but I wish my husband was here. Anyways, we're going to let this completely dry um, before we move on to adding, because right now I know it looks like a big blob, but trust me, it should work out in the end, I hope. Let's, let's hope it does. <laughs> okay, so I think that this is dry now. I'm hoping that it is. Just going to quickly stick this on here so I can move it freely. Um, so, kind of debating what to paint next, what details to paint next. Um, and I think we'll do the background grasses first, I guess. So I've taken my size one brush here, and I'm going to take the, the lightest yellow that I have, and even a white would do here, honestly. <clears throat> and right at that... I don't even want to call it a horizon line, but the area where <clears throat> there's an obvious separation from the top and the bottom is where you're going to start painting blades of grass or some sort of foliage. Now I'm realizing that that brush is too thick, so I'm switching to my size zero where I hopefully have, yeah, there we go, a little bit more control so I can get nice thin brush strokes to have nice thin 
grasses. Now, honestly, this is probably not going to show very much. It's not really going to make or break your, your painting. So if you want to forego this step, you can. I'm also mixing in some lime green strands That should be fine. We're gonna be painting more strands of grass, but I just, because we're painting a fence, I didn't want those strands to like mess up what we're doing. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to do is add like this shrub that's close to where you see the blue the blue sky because the blue sky like obviously you can see that because there isn't anything blocking the blue sky <laughs> uh, like no trees or no clouds so I do want to paint like a shrub or something there and I'm using white watercolor and I'm going to transition that into yellow, orange, like a light orange. And then green, like a lime green. And then I'm going to try and just fade that into the background a little bit so I just want it to be kind of like a natural thing back there okay now we're gonna add some substance to this painting so I'm gonna pull out my size 8 just to make this a tad bit easier and I'm gonna pull out my brown or use brown watercolor for this mixed with black until you're happy with your shade of brown um, okay we're gonna paint a tree so this tree is gonna come from here somewhere and it's gonna go upwards so like this and feel free to switch brushes obviously like because I'm going to be painting smaller branches now I need a thinner brush to make it easier for myself so do the same if you feel you have to and I don't know like looking at this painting I don't know if that's a separate tree behind there or a branch coming from this one tree but it looks something like this and 
and I want to add some value to my tree. So I'm darkening one side, the side that's away from the light. I think I'll even be daring and add some black while it's still wet. Guys, I'm not going to lie, I keep thinking about my chickens and I really want to go check on them. <sighs> After this experience, I mean, not that I ever wanted a pet to begin with. I'm not a dog person. I like cats, like, but I'm allergic. I am never going to get a pet. I care way too much about these animals and it's causing me so much stress that I did not have before. Like I always, before I was like, why are people so distraught when something happens to their pet? I just couldn't relate because I never had that experience. Like I had a rabbit and I had a hamster, but I was really young and didn't really form the kind of bond that I guess people do with with dogs or whatnot. Um, <sighs> anyways. Gosh, if I feel this way towards chickens, what is motherhood going to be like? That is a bit terrifying. If you permanently just feel stressed out that there's something wrong with your child. At least raccoons and squirrels are not going to eat my children. <laughs> I hope. Oh my gosh. Knock on wood. So I'm adding these random branches out behind here because why not? It adds something to the painting. Um... I'm going to add another tree-like structure over here because I painted this darker, so naturally there's some kind of um, foliage or growth of some sorts over here. Oh my gosh, I just realized when you guys see this tutorial, I am already going to have given birth. Like, I'm already going to have my baby. Unless it's a very late baby. But that's scary to think about because I often when I film tutorials I'm like oh like this is gonna be uploaded this month and I remember doing that in March when I was filming in March for June or whatever month I was filming for I'm like oh my gosh when this is uploaded like when you guys see this it's going to be warm outside I'm gonna be gardening already and and now that time has come and uh, it just feels like that was not that long ago that I was saying that. So that is a bit terrifying. That's a terrifying thought. Not terrifying, but it's, it's certainly uneasy. I feel uneasy about it. So this is working out quite a bit nicer than I was expecting it to which is typically the case because my expectations are usually not very high. Um, I do want to add a lot more dark features on this side, which I wish I had when it was still wet. It would have been a lot easier, but 
So I'm kind of just dotting my paintbrush with black and a little bit of green, I suppose, in there. Okay, the other thing I want to do, I'm switching back to my size one, and I'm going to be using that brown black combination again for the fence. So the fence is going to go somewhere here. Um, so we're going to have maybe one fence post here. I really like adding fences to paintings because when you're painting very naturey paintings, everything tends to be quite abstract and organic looking. Like all the shapes are very organic looking. But when you can add, I feel like a, a rotting old fence in a forest is still very naturey because it's like kind of become one with decomposition in nature uh, but it's still a a human built um, structure if we would call a fence a structure so it adds a little element of um, what word am I looking for it just adds an element to your painting uh, that wouldn't be there if it was just all nature and nothing man-made. So you don't have to add a fence, of course. I'm just doing it because one, it's in this reference photo, but uh, two, I really, really like adding fences to my paintings. And I usually really like making them super old and abstract and falling apart, but this one's really close up. Uh, So I can't kind of wing it in the same way that I typically do my fences. But you can still, to some degree, because the more the less controlled it looks, the more natural it looks. The more it looks like it's old and falling apart and needs replacing that sort of thing now we don't want this fence to be floating so we're obviously going to be adding some grassy features towards the bottom uh, so you can take whatever greens that you have or that you want to use and i'm taking some darker ones um, and we're just going to be creating little grassy features on the bottom so I like to do this as well when I'm painting winter paintings and I have a fence post I add like snow to the bottom of the fence post which makes it look a lot more realistic adds another element to the painting um, so feel free to do the same if you want to And anywhere where I've created these darker areas, it's because that's where I'm going to be painting the bulk of my, my grassy features. Um, and I just wanted like a background color so that I had, I don't have to paint as much grass to fill those areas in. There's already like a base of darkness. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to paint for sure.
See, that was really quick and it wouldn't have looked this nice and neat if we didn't have that dark, darker background, so. And you can try it. You can even do like two beside one another and see what a difference it makes when you do add that darker background versus when you do not. And who knows, maybe you'll like the look of the background list version more. Totally up to you. I'm adding some black. That's too black, I think. I need to water this down a little bit. I just left to go check check on my chickens again. There's only three of them in the run. So I hope that means the other two are laying eggs because Come on, slackers. Uh, they've, no, they've been under so much stress from this squirrel the last few days that I don't blame them. But when I left and I came back to this, like I left to go check on them and then I came back, I'm like, oh wow, this, this painting is coming together really nicely. So that goes to show you how important it is or perhaps how beneficial it is to step away from your painting especially when you're frustrated with it or you can't get something right take a break just go do something else even if it's for a brief five minutes go do something else come back to it and you might come back to it with a fresh perspective and it might just come easier to you like work working on it might come easier to you um or, you know, sometimes, sometimes paintings just don't work out. Like, no matter how we try to convince ourselves, it just is horrible. And that's okay. Like, n not everything is perfect. Not everything has to be a masterpiece. We have to learn to accept that perfection is not attainable. And I think only once you kind of grasp that, that, hey, like, this is just how any creative process works. Like, you cannot be perfect in everything that you do. Um, I think only then do you grow as an artist. Because you can't lie to yourself. You also can't be like, oh, this, I think this looks horrible, but... But I'm going to say it looks great because, because, yeah, then you're just lying to yourself and you're not being truthful. And I don't think you really grow as an artist that way anyway. But there's a difference between that and just constantly um, being unkind to yourself every single painting. Although at that point, maybe you should give up on painting. No, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Please don't take that seriously. I mean, some people just don't have, you know, that knack that you need for painting. And that's okay. Like, not everyone has to be good at absolutely everything. Maybe painting just isn't your thing. Try some other artistic um, thing that you can get better at. Like, I am not very mechanically inclined. So no matter how much I try to fix our car, it's probably not going to be a very good job compared to if my husband did it. That's just how the world works. That's the beauty of the world. And if people are offended by that, then I think they need to kind of get a grip on reality. But that extends to a lot of things in life, especially current day, which will we, we will not get into because... Uh, Let's just, yeah, we just won't get into that. Because this is a painting channel. This is a happy, positive painting channel. So this thing is starting to look very dark. 
I was hoping there would be more color, but I guess in order for there to be more color, I have to paint with more color. So I'm picking up uh, a yellow that has a tint of orange in it and just going to add some accents to the bottom part of my painting here just to lighten it up a little bit I like that. I really like what what is happening here. And this is improv. This is not, and this is why in many of my paintings, I encourage people to do kind of what speaks to them and what feels right. Uh, I don't want to sound like metaphysical here. So it's not my intention. Um, but if you're watching this tutorial and you have this feeling that, oh, I want to paint like a, a tree here or a blade of grass here, go for it. Try it out. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as what I'm painting. And a lot of people are, are fearful of deviating from, from what they're seeing, right? Or what they're taught. And you're never going to learn or grow as an artist if you just stick to um, one thing. You have to kind of develop your own way of painting or your own, following your own intuition. Like some people are not naturally in tune with their intuition and that's okay, but that develops over time. And if you don't listen to that, if you don't listen to those pings of, um, of intuition, then you won't grow as an artist. I want to add some color, flowers, something. So I'm going to take, uh, and I, but I want to maintain this autumn look. So I'm going to take orange. As much as I want to do like a pink or a magenta. Um, so another shameless plug here for, this isn't even my, my palette, my personal palette, but I was given this palette to try out by this company and I love it. The colors are so opaque. Like I would not have been able, if I close do a close up here, I would not have been able to paint these opaque orange flowers on top of this almost black grass that I've painted with my previous palette. It just would not have happened. Or maybe I could have, but I would have had to have a lot of layers and put a lot more effort into it. So I am very impressed with the quality of these paints and um, if you want your own there is a link in my description and uh, you'll probably get like a, a percentage off by using that link I just haven't received I'm pre-filming for the future and I haven't received this link yet but I know I'm going to have one and it'll give me a little bit of commission um, it's a great way to support an artist that you enjoy watching. So I just added some random orange, like flowery accents in the base area here. Um, I'm tempted to add some white accents as well. Um, but not now. Right now we just want to finish the bulk of what we're painting here. So. This tree has dried a little bit, 
So I'm taking a little bit of leftover black watercolor that I had on my palette and I'm adding that black shadowy accent back to my tree because it sort of faded out as it dried. And I'll do so on the other side as well. And we can actually do that on the fence too, because um, it'll make your painting look nicer. There's more shadowy details and makes your your the fence look 3d more realistic there we go now i don't know what's going on on this side there's like I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to try to add some more trees or, you know, little saplings growing here. So you guys can see a little bit better what I'm painting here. Um, it's looking a lot barer here than I wanted. I wanted there to be a lot of leaf, leafy accents and whatnot, which I can still technically add, but this tutorial is already so long. And I have seven more to do today and I'm so hungry I need to eat lunch. Uh, so I think I'm going to just call it quits, but like I said before, that doesn't stop you from continuing on and making this your own, you know, like add more to it, add whatever is speaking to you. Okay, I think I'm just gonna stop. This, ah, but this area here looks so bare that I wanna add something. Actually, the only other thing I'm going to add is uh, some white accents that I mentioned earlier. Like little, so I've taken a white watercolor. Usually I would do this with acrylic paint but that would require me to get the acrylic paint and get, a, yeah, too much effort. So I am just adding white watercolor uh, Maybe I can, oh, that works too, okay. Because this is what I would do with acrylic paint, is water it down and then bang it against another brush so it splatters onto my painting. But this is working really well with this watercolor, which would not have worked with my previous palette because this one is so much more opaque, as I've said many times. But I'm kind of adding it everywhere because it makes the painting look a little bit more mystical. That looks really nice. So we're gonna peel this off, the tape. To reveal hopefully clean edges. And that is our painting. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know in the description what you think. 
Um, hit like on this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe because I upload two videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.